Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday, uh, March 22nd. I'm on my way to work. Hopefully, I will not bump the uh, record button like I did yesterday. Because I did, and then I. Uh, In a quarter mile. Merge lost onto I 5 footage. North. Shut up, Siri, I'm recording. Just kidding, Siri. You're telling me where to go to get to work. And are you gonna go, young sir? Thank you. We're at the freeway and it's that thing where, I don't know if anyone else has this. I won't, you know, I haven't paid attention to other states and I haven't really driven in other states. Um, but when you're getting onto the freeway, if the freeway's really packed, or not even really packed, if it's just you know pretty busy, they're like the on-ramp will have two lanes and it'll tell you to make two lanes. Continue and on I-5 North for six miles. It will like have um, like lights to let each lane go when it's their turn. So like that way the freeway isn't crazy packed all at once and you don't get one line of cars all trying to move into the freeway. You have two lines taking turns to like slowly you know, ease into traffic. I don't know, it's nice. It keeps the keeps the freeway pretty, you know, moving. But anyway, good morning. How are you guys? I can't really look at the camera too much because, you know, I'm driving on the freeway and it's raining. We've got sore again. Oh snap. Okay, hello. You want to speed up on my side a little bit faster? Turbo? So, fun fact, guys. Um, a couple years ago, I was in a car accident and it kind of messed with my brain. What happened was my sister was driving, she had her license, um, and my dad was in the front seat with her. We were in downtown Portland, which if you're gonna come to Oregon and you're a, I, I don't know how to describe, not a new driver, well, specifically if you are a new driver, but if you don't have if you don't have a good idea of your car and what your car can do and can't do and like how quickly you can slam on your brakes don't go to downtown portland don't drive in downtown portland because everyone in downtown portland drives like they're trying to kill everyone like it's a pain because no one no one cares or has respect for anyone else down there it's i love portland don't get me wrong it's where i was born and raised so i mean i love my city but people drive like maniacs down there. And hence people driving like maniacs. We were in a car accident. Um, there was like a box truck, like a delivery truck in front of us. And we were stopped, we were at a red light. And all of a sudden I hear my dad screaming my sister's name, going Bella, 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 trying to like get her to reverse. But he was in shock, so he didn't say reverse. He thought she was moving forward, but no. The delivery truck in front of us was moving very quickly backwards and backed into us and I'm stopped so I can do this. Get this, they were trying to avoid being hit by a Prius. Big box delivery truck and they're trying to avoid being hit by a Prius. So they back into this little Toyota Passport or Honda Passport, whatever, and totaled the car. Um, they hit us bad enough. like. My sister and I had minor whiplash. She got really bad PTSD because she was the driver. So it scared the crap out of her. Um, I had some very minor PTSD from it, but I mean, it's mostly past. I just don't like driving near semis now or being near semis. And there's a semi because it freaks me out because I feel like the semi is just gonna, you know, decide to not care and hit someone. Okay, I want to get over. This is insane. I'm like checking my mirror to see if I can get over. I was finally able to catch a break in traffic and get over. Jeez, that was insane. This morning's vlog is kind of boring. I'm just excited to actually be moving now because now I can finish getting to work. So 
sometimes it's fun on the freeway when it's traffic because or when there's traffic because then you can like hit your brakes every once in a while and then like you can slow down to match the pace of traffic and then you can ease off your brakes and just kind of glide without even you know hitting any pedals at least it's better than yesterday yesterday we were all going 20 now I'm going 30 on a 55 Yeah, you know, we're actually moving. I'm actually going over 40 now. Yay, we're moving. We're moving, we're moving. Everybody's moving. I need to get onto the Haynes exit. Oh no, now we're slowing down again. Why? So, I got sick. I got sick on Sunday, and it started with some tooth pain. And I'm like, huh, I wonder why my teeth hurt. That's strange considering I just had the teeth that were hurting. I just had them filled and like taken care of and everything. So I'm like, why are they hurting? They shouldn't be hurting, they should be fine. Uh, Monday they hurt a whole hell done. Tuesday morning I went to work for a couple hours, left around 11, went to the hospital. Uh, doctor said that essentially I had so much sinus pressure that it was building up. Um, and pushing against my gums and pushing against my teeth, which is why my teeth were hurting. Like, I couldn't close my mouth and have my teeth in touch without, like, my teeth being in, without being in excruciating pain. He said, essentially, there was, like, a clogged pore that wasn't letting mucus drain and it wasn't letting oxygen Turn left out. Onto Southwest Atlanta Street, Southwest Haynes Street. Okay, you can right, shut up. I turned off the GPS. That was pissing me off. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay, that sucks. Uh, but it gave me some Sudafed, which, fun fact, only 4% of the U.S. population is allergic to Sudafed. Guess who's part of that 4%? Yeah. So he gave me Sudafed, and he said, like, you know, take Sudafed, and it should help you feel better. And also something else that was going on was my left ear was hurting so bad like I thought I had an ear infection I thought that's what was causing the pain no it wasn't an ear infection essentially since oxygen couldn't flow what was happening was the atmospheric pressure on the outside of my ear wasn't being evened out by oxygen going on the inside of my ear so it felt like someone was blowing directly into my ear essentially like that's the pain I was in so I took the Sudafed around like 1 p.m on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday morning, I woke up, and I need to preface this first. My lip was slightly, and I mean very slightly swollen because of the pressure and because nothing would drain. Now, when I took the Sudafed, it pissed it off. It pissed off my lip, pissed off the pressure, pissed off everything. So, I woke up Wednesday morning and my entire face was swollen. Like my lip was so swollen. It was like shiny. Um, like it was swollen up into my cheeks. It was swollen like almost into my eyes. If I blinked, I could feel the pressure. Tuesday, I missed work. Wednesday, I missed work. Um, and Thursday I missed work because my Tuesday I was just feeling so miserable I was in so much pain and then Wednesday I was swollen I could barely talk literally like so this entire area was like <sighs> blown up so everything hurt and I missed a couple days of work and because I'm so new at my job even though I had doctor's notes I couldn't like, it couldn't be excused. So, and at my work, they have something called an attendance point policy or an occurrence policy. And if you miss m less than two hours of your shift, you get half an occurrence. But if you miss more than two hours of your shift, you get a full occurrence. And with new employees, in your first 90 days, you're not allowed to have more than three occurrences. Now keep in mind, more than two hours is a full occurrence. I had already missed one day because there was a really bad snow and ice day that I could not get to work. That full day of missing work, plus I went home another day, less than two hours, 
before my shift, or less than two hours before the end of my shift, so it was only half an occurrence, so I had one and a half. And then, because the three days that I missed <laughs> from being sick, which I'm still sick, it's just not as bad, um, they couldn't roll that, which I thought they could at the time. That's the only time, that's the only reason I really was willing to stay home. I would have come into work if I knew, no, they couldn't, like, they couldn't take it. They couldn't, you know, allow it. But no, I thought they couldn't. I was informed poorly, I guess. Come back to work from being miserably sick, and I get pulled into a side office, and I get told pretty much they're making an exception because of how well I do my job. But if this, if the case were any different, I would have gotten fired right then and there. And I'm like, well, that doesn't make sense. I, you know, brought in doctor's notes for the times saying that my, or my doctor said I could not work. And they're like, yeah, well, it's not really within policy. You know, you signed a contract saying you're not going to be eligible for that until 90 days. I'm like, that's BS. No, I didn't. And anyway, so it was a long story, but they pretty much told me like we're gonna make an exception but you cannot be late like whatsoever you can't be late and like for the rest of your 90 days or we will fire you so on that note I'm gonna get into work because I've got like five minutes to clock in which all I need to do is run upstairs and open my computer and clock in so it's super easy but I will talk to you guys later bye Taylor team